Hi, welcome to the GameForge Player Spotlight. I'm Mark Sweeney and I'm here with Donald Scott. Uh, we are going to have a look at Christy Kerr because she's a fascinating player from the LPGA who was, uh, was ranked in the top 10 in money for 10 seasons, which is the second highest ever um, next to Annika Sorenstam. So she had a spectacular career, especially a long stretch in the middle uh, where she was ranked 10th, uh, 10th or higher in money for I think eight years straight, which is very, very unusual. But the fascinating thing we see about Christy is her first three or four years on tour were actually um, fairly average. Uh, this graph shows her money rank starting in 1997 going all the way up to 2018. And what you can see is her, her first year on tour she barely kept her card and then for the next four years she worked her way up to the top 20. And then by eight years she got in the top 10 and kept a long stretch in the top 10 for another eight years which is pretty amazing. Stayed in the top 20 and then has been kind of back and forth had a couple more top 10 years there. So the analysis Donald and I want to do is now look at what scoring factors we can find that actually helped her get to that top 10 ranking. In other words, what pieces of her game moved and improved over those first four years uh, that really reflected in her score and in her money ranking. So the interesting thing about Christy is that it took her like a number of years before she really started to see her performance both level out and her performance uh, factors really improve. So if you look, when she came out on tour first, she was like, she had a stroke average of 73.5 and we can see over the course of seven to 10 years, she dropped that by an amazing three and a half shots, which when you think playing at the highest level of the game to improve by three and a half shots, over a five to ten year period is just an incredible uh, testament to the work that she put in and how she managed to improve her game but it also tells people that if you're patient and you just keep doing the work and getting better year by year you can really see some magical things happen as the as the following years, years went on as mark explained where she had 10 years inside the top 10 on the money list so once again just to show she started first season stroke average 73.5 <coughs> barely kept her card and then 10 years later she's down around the 70 mark um, in stroke average and it's just an incredible uh, level of improvement that she managed to pull off. Alright, the next thing we want to do is actually break these scoring metrics down to see what correlates the best with her um, scoring average ranking. So the orange bar here that you can see, that's her ranking and scoring average and you can clearly see where she's up here in the top 10 money list. And the blue line is her driving accuracy. So what we do see, even though there's not a, a perfect correlation, we do see that her driving um, and ball striking dramatically improved in those years that she worked her way up inside the top 20 and the top 10, uh, especially those first four to eight years. There was a big improvement in driving accuracy, which certainly um, helped with her scoring average. But as you go on through the years, there's years where her scoring was better than her driving and vice versa. So there, there is some sort of correlation in the beginning there, but it doesn't hold super well after that. So besides driving accuracy, we're going to have a look next at putting, to see how our putting changed. Um, so this is an interesting graph again. So if we look at this, um, especially in the first few years, so we can see from 98 to 2001 and through, the two lines really work together with each other where we can see the ranking in the, the putting category is really being well represented by her overall ranking at the end of the year in the money list. Um, what's also once again impressive is you look at where she came from, so like 100 on her worst year, 130th on the, on, on the ranking list, all the way up to a consistent performer in the top 10 at the very, very top of the game. And to have such a high level of improvement, such a, such a marked improvement over uh, a period of time is just a uh, a really, really uh, solid performance from Christy in terms of both the patience over these couple of years as she was getting better, and then the ability to maintain those high levels of performances over such a long period of time in a, such a, a, a high level career like Christy had. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at is greens and regulation to see what that correlation looks like. And what surprised both of us when we saw this is that there is a very, very tight correlation and movement between her greens and regulation or scoring average. Uh, like we saw with driving, her, her greens and regulation got higher and higher and higher and better and better over the course of eight years. But you can see when it dropped, her scoring average dropped with it in almost every situation, especially here in 2011, 
in 2016. Um, so we see there's a very tight connection between Christie's Greens and regulation for our ball striking uh, and her scoring. That's that's the highest correlation that we see with the data that's available. Even though putting putting was was relatively high, it's amazing how tight this fit is for for her greens and what her scoring average does. So we th we found this a fascinating um, look into you know to a to a player that's had an unbelievable career that managed to maintain high high levels of golf more than pretty much anybody else in history on the LPGA. And it's there's some good lessons that you can take for your own game as far as understanding when your score goes up and down, what is actually affecting that. The nice thing now is that we've got a lot more metrics that we can track. Uh, if you go back, you know, 20 years in the LPGA, there's there's only some very high level metrics, but now we can get down to a much lower level. And this is an analysis that's, that you really want to be doing with your own game and understand not only what you're doing, but what the best players are doing to benchmark yourself. Yeah, and as Mark said, it's like the big thing that we can learn from Christy is uh, where you are now is not necessarily where you're going to get to, and that if you're patient and you keep improving every aspect of your game, there's no reason to believe where you can't go from, uh, especially at a, like on a tour level where we have like such high level rankings, from such a low ranking to such a high ranking, and to consistently keep it there, and to understand that it may take up to ten years, like what we saw for Christy before she registered her first year inside the top ten. I hope you enjoyed that. We're planning on doing a series and um, highlighting different players every week. And if you have any questions or any players that you spe specifically would like to see, please let us know.